Welcome back to Home Sweet Home Cooking. I am your host Rocky, along with my mother Kathy, in her kitchen as always. Today we are doing a recipe from your side of the family, from your aunt, my great aunt, uh, Evelyn. Uh, she passed away when I was 16, so that's 34 years ago. Whoa. Yeah, she's been gone a while. Uh, this is one of her recipes, and she made this a lot. Everybody loved it. Yeah. I don't remember it because she was probably, as she was getting older, she made it less when the, you know, wasn't much family left because this kind of feeds a bunch of people. She used to make an Inesco roaster. Yeah. Uh, and it was full. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure I've eaten it before. I just don't remember it because, like I said, it was, she probably stopped making it long before I turned 16. How old was she when she passed away? I have no idea. She was pretty old. Uh, it is a baked beef and beans, so it's kind of like a, a hearty uh, baked bean. Basically, it's good. Uh, you serve it as a main dish, I would assume. Can yeah. Can it is pretty simple to make. I would guess this comes out of Depression era cooking. Probably. Yeah, it's simple ingredients. You've got uh, the rest. Of what I'll call what the recipe calls for. My amounts are just kind of guesstimated. I know there's a little more meat than it calls for. One pound of ground beef, browned and drained. One half pound of bacon. You want to cut that up into pieces. One medium onion. I know I've got a little more than a half and a little more than a medium onion, so and a little more meat. Calls for a one pound can of baked beans. They don't make a one pound can anymore, so they got a 15 ounce. That is undrained, so you keep the liquid in there. One can of kidney beans drained. One can of lima beans drained. One half cup ketchup. Two tablespoons of vinegar. We're using apple cider vinegar. Uh, one teaspoon of, um, of uh, yellow mustard. One teaspoon of salt and a half cup of sugar. Uh, those are the ingredients, and we're gonna get to it. Um, gotta brown off the ground beef. I got my pot going here. And that's brown sugar. Yeah, brown sugar. Did I say brown sugar or did I just say you sugar? Just said sugar. Oh, okay. You just said sugar, 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 sugar. So I'm gonna get my meat going, I'm gonna get that started, and we're gonna add the onion here a little bit. Um, like we said, this she made this in a Nesco, and that's why I don't remember ever having this out of a nest that big because it was she made this one that there's a bunch of family over right and I don't remember I mean our your side of the family was pretty much going going gone before I was old enough to remember them all probably so yeah this is something that I know I've had just I don't remember because I was really young but it sounds good he went to one funeral with Evelyn and she went up to the casket and left him sitting in back and she had her wig on and when he came back, he grabbed a hold of her, knocked her wig off, and said, I know somebody died, but what I want to know is who killed her. And that, I would have had to have been way young, like first yeah, or second you, grade, probably. Probably Maybe not even that old. Yeah. I was a, a, a rambunctious child, so. Uh, we're going to get this browned off, and we're going to get this thrown in there, sauteed with it when it gets closer to being done. I just want to get some of this oil out of the meat, some of the grease out of the meat, to start sauteing that. And instead of draining it, I'm going to use a slotted spoon. We're going to put it into a casserole dish. So uh, there's, I don't a have... there's a sucker in here. That's fine. Um, I want to save the fat to, to brown it to, to saute that. But I'll just scoop this out and put it in the casserole so I don't actually have to pick this up and drain it. This is, by the way, a Curtis Stone 15 inch ceramic. Um, giving this a try. We've used it on one recipe so far. So far, I like it. Maybe uh, if, uh, if I keep continuing to like it, I'll get a, a, an Amazon page going and put some links to things that I like, but nothing that I don't like. <laughs> but that'll be later down the road. I won't um, be on the list. <laughs> so we're getting this started. We'll be back when it's ready to put in the casserole. So just stay tuned and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we are done. Luckily, it is cooked. The bacon and onions and the hamburger. Um, my review on the Curtis Stone cookware, don't waste your money. Uh, we were getting close to the end of the cycle and it started to hum and you could hear the electrical cracker crackling going on. The element inside underneath the pan shorted out and burnt out. I've used this twice. I got it used. She says she's only used it twice. It was too big for just her and her husband. So, and this is in excellent condition as far as looks go. So I know it wasn't used a lot and it just burnt out. So, uh, and that's what I've read from some of the other uh, reviews on the Curtis Stone electric skillet is that it's no bueno and I will agree with that so skip the Curtis Stone find something else all right we have the the meat browned off the onion sauteed time for I tried to put it in a three quart casserole it didn't fit it was going to overflow so I stopped and I transferred it to a 9 by 13 if you would go with exactly one pound of hamburger and one half pound and a medium onion it would probably be enough room but because I went a little bit overboard maybe a little bit short 
So I add the beans, add the other beans, add the other beans. And now you're full of beans. And let me go for a smaller spatula. Add your ketchup. Add your vinegar. Add your mustard. Add your salt. And your brown sugar. And now you're just going to mix this up. Uh, as you notice, it's just salt. If you want to add black pepper to it, I'm sure you can, but I'm just going to make it the way that my aunt had it written, just lime and bean escape, uh, just because I want to see the way that she served it to the family. Uh, there's always salt and pepper shakers on the table, so if you want pepper on it, you can always add it at the table, I'm sure. And that was pretty simple. Uh, 350 degrees for one hour. I would say probably covered. Yeah, because she always did it in Mexico and that was covered. Yeah. Um, I was actually thinking with this Curtis Stone, what I wanted to try doing is instead of putting it in the oven and baking it, I was just going to do it as a one-pot meal in the skillet, the electric skillet, leave it covered, but, uh, well, Curtis Stone changed my mind. I <laughs> can't do that if it's not working. <laughs> so, uh, that's what I was thinking what she did in the Nesco. I, I don't see there being a reason why you couldn't do it completely in an electric skillet on the countertop if you had to. All right, mixed in pretty good there. Um, like I said... If you wanted to add pepper in at this point, you could add pepper in at this point. If you wanted to add in other things like hot sauce, would now be the time to do it. What else might you put in here? Green peppers? Yeah. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit on what you can put in this. This is just your, your basic. Uh, we're talking about this being a depression era meal. There wasn't a whole lot of grease left uh, in there from uh, when I mixed it or when I browned it off. If you are trying to feed family for cheap and trying to stretch every dollar for uh, nutrition and energy, you would leave that grease in because grease is fat, fat is calories, calories gives you energy. So if you're short on a pinch, don't drain it unless it's absolutely overflowing with grease. Uh, and if it is, you can always just serve it with bread or put a piece of bread on, a piece of, on the plate, pour this on top of it and then the grease would soak down the bread and you could still eat it um, and get all those calories. So this is going to go in the oven, 350 degrees for one hour and we'll be back and we'll have a good taste. I hope a good taste. See you in a bit. All right, the camera battery died after halfway through that taste test. We get to taste it again, and I've got no problem with that because, folks, this is really good. Uh, sweet, savory, meaty. It's like, it's like a little like chili, but not like chili at all. Yeah, it doesn't have the, it's got the hardiness of chili to it with the beans and the beef, um, but it doesn't have the, the cumin. I mean, you could easily make this out of kidney, uh, chili beans and make it more like chili. But, but I think this, yeah, well, this is fantastic way it is. I could see doing this in a smoker, getting some smoke flavor on there. Um, changes to it, not much. Uh, pepper, a little bit of black pepper if you like it. I don't think green peppers would do it any better or any worse. Mushrooms might be good in there as an extra filler. Uh, turkey meat probably wouldn't hurt it. That's fine, just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, you can do things to make it your own, but it's, this is really good the way it is. It's, it's hearty. There's plenty of fat in there to make it stick to the ribs, give you energy. I think what makes me think of chili is the beans. Mm hmm But the lima beans you wouldn't put in chili. No. Some people do. Um, we're not wrong. But this is really good, folks. Um, give it a try. Like I say, it's, it's an old recipe, a very old recipe. Um, I'll make this again. I'm, even though my girlfriend won't eat it. I could eat that whole tray in a couple days. I could probably eat that in one day if I started having it for breakfast. I like it that mm -hmm. much. Uh, good as a side. It's got plenty of meat in there. You could actually serve it as a, a main part of the meal. Uh, maybe some fresh bread with it on the side and some fresh bread and butter. If you're doing an outdoor get together and you just want to have a a quick uh, you know, an afternoon lunch type of meal, make it in a crock pot, make it in Nesco, whatever, and uh, do what you're doing in the morning. Come back and have this for your lunch meal. Serve it up with some bowls and bread. Be easy meal for people to eat. And again, it'll be hearty and warm. So, for a fall or a spring or you know activity going on outside, this would be perfect. I like this. I give this one thumbs, two thumbs, way up. 
Uh, thank you, Evelyn, for the recipe. I miss you. Um, I love your recipes. <laughs> and that makes two. Now, this one was, and they're her ranger cookies. The first video I did on the channel was ranger cookies was hers, and I do miss her a lot. Um, give this a try, folks. If you have any other bean-based casseroles like this or bakes, share them below. I would like to try some more, because this is, this is right up my alley. Um, make sure you like and share and subscribe to help us grow the channel a little more. The uh, Curtis Stone cooker is a big thumbs down. Don't buy the Curtis Stone. I'm not happy at, at all about that. So I'm going to continue what I can't eat anymore because my girlfriend, I think she wants to do something for supper so I can't have any more of this. <laughs> and we still have that other one to try yet for the other video. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop for now, but I may end up having this for supper tonight because I don't know what her dinner plans are. We'll save some for dad because he should eat this. He should. He should. So, all right, folks, thank you for watching and have yourself a great afternoon. Bye.